Greetings and welcome to the second video installment of Adventures in Cigar Rolling. My name is Mike Stewart. I'll be your host today. Hope you've also had the opportunity to watch the first video that I produced that talked about and showed you the different pieces of equipment you will want to have and use in your cigar rolling efforts. Today's video is going to focus on leaf, tobacco leaf, its storage, the condition in which you can expect it to be in when, you, when it arrives at your house, and uh, how to rehydrate it before using it in your rolling. Before we get into that though, I want to show you one really cool DVD that I found a few months back. It's called The Fabulous Story of the Cuban Cigar. I got it via Amazon. This is a really good comprehensive video uh, talking about cigar production, the growing of the leaf, uh, the processes it goes through in the factories, and it also gives you some glimpses into Cuban cigar culture and how very much cigars are a part of the everyday Cuban's life. I will uh, ask you to give me a little bit of uh, leeway here today as I'm going to be panning around a lot, going to the various areas of my office so we can present to you the video today. What I'm showing you first are two groups of leaves that I received. You can see that they're fairly tightly wound together. They're not flat. They're not ready to use. They are also, as you can hear, pretty dry. This is a good thing, as a leaf that sits around in a moist state tends to get moldy. So we, by and large, we want to keep them in that dry state. Over here are five kinds of tobacco leaf. These are actually the five kinds of leaf that I'm currently using in the cigars that I am creating at this time. Let me go through them real quick from right to left. This is also um, in terms of uh, strength from mild to strong. We have a Seiko leaf. That's a relatively mild leaf. Next to it is a Viso leaf. It's a little stronger. And then Ligero leaf, that is the strongest leaf that we have. And these are the three flavored or the uh, strengths of leaf that I use in my cigars. The first uh, big leaf that you see here is my binder. It's an Ecuador Sumatra leaf. Very mild, doesn't really impart a lot of flavor into the cigar. And then finally the largest dark leaf is an Ecuador Shade leaf. A fairly potent leaf, has a nice nice color to it also a very nice smooth texture for the rolling and just an idea these are some that I finished up this morning you can't get a very good taste here but you can see where I'm going with these leaves you might wonder how you can decide which leaves to put in your cigars what is the best way to decide and my answer to you is there is no best way I can't tell you the secret to finding a good combination it's up to you to decide what works best for your flavor palette. What I did when I first started is, is that I put together test blends and that I would roll cigars, two or three, maybe four, using a certain grouping of leaves. For example, test blend number one says I use two Dominican Seiko leaves, one Nicaraguan Viso leaf, and one Dominican Ligero leaf. And then I would separate these cigars in their own bags. I would leave them in there. Sorry. Not yet. I would wrap the cigars in the same kind of wrapper or wrappers. Then I would uh, separate them into their individual bags. A few days later, I would start smoking them and say, hey, that one's pretty good. Or, boy, that one just doesn't work very well. And then you say, okay, well, let's take the one that I thought was pretty good. And maybe I'll tweak it this way or this way. And eventually you come up with, hopefully, a uh, flavor profile that you like. Down here, you see a chart. This is the chart that I use with my cigars. My, my house blend is called Casa Trompeta, House of Trumpet, as that is my profession. And what I show you here, you see the size, the number, numerical size and the name size. And then I show you in the uh, top line that I've used two Dominican Seiko leaves, one Viso from Nicaragua, and one Ligero leaf from the Dominican Republic, and a choice of three wrappers, the C, Connecticut, ED, the Ecuador Dark, and the EY is an Ecuador yellow leaf. I've also made a couple of cigars for friends uh, to their specifications. The Tobaina and the Stallion are, again, uh, special requests. 
you don't have to get this specific with it. I'm trying to make cigars that are consistent in their size and their flavor profile, but maybe you just want to make them one at a time and uh, kind of have the uh, result be a, a guess to you, to be surprised by what comes out. That's fine. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. Okay, so I mentioned that the leaves are going to come to you dry, and we want to keep them that way. But we don't want to have them in, in a dangerous place where they can get broken or crumbled up. So what I've done is I built myself a fairly large wooden box in which to store them. I've got some wire shelving in here. A uh, pl big plastic blue bin. The blue bin was actually the first thing that I used for storing the leaves. But two things happened. One, I started getting too much leaf. And secondly, in the summertime, my basement where I do all my work gets pretty humid. And in the big, and when they were all together in the plastic bin, I was getting some issues with moisture and mold. So this seems to have helped alleviate that. You'll notice you see a lot of plastic bags in here. Each bag has a separate kind of leaf. In this bag is some Ecuador Dark Shade. That's the, the uh, wrapper leaf. There's some Viso leaf on that middle shelf, the Ligero in the bottom bin. And then in here I have some binder leaf, some Seiko leaf, and then some bags of some extra extras. You don't have to do this much. It's all up to you and how you want to do it. And I'm surely I'm sure you can come up with other ways to store your leaf in an equally fine or better fashion. Now once it's time to actually use our leaf though we have to get them out of this dry state. If you use them like this they're just going to crumble, crack, and you're going to be pretty unhappy with what comes out. So what I figured out I could do is I went to uh, the container store, you can go to Target or wherever your favorite home office supply center is, and I bought a couple of plastic filing cabinets or drawers. Cheap, inexpensive, uh, lightweight, good size. The, these Each uh, shelf section here, each file section is about 12 by 16 by 8, and you see on top uh, a plastic bin. This plastic bin will fit into the drawer but doesn't fill up the drawer so I've got maybe an inch and a half or two of space below that bin uh, below below the basket in the bottom of the bin I'll put water in there then into the actual drawer then place the bin in uh, inside the bin I'll put a piece of wax paper and then I'll put the leaf on top of that paper the wax paper will help protect from any uh, splashes so over here, here's a bin that's still full. I, I also have them labeled. Uh, the leaf tends to look alike, and it's hard to keep track of them, so I try to be real careful about what goes where. I'll open up a drawer here. This is my Ligero leaf. You see that's on the wax paper. The water does get a little discolored because bits and pieces of leaf will fall in and slowly dissolve, staining the plastic eventually. Um, this this uh, shelving unit is about 14 months old, so it's going to have some discoloration. Once you have your leaf in, you have to do something to keep the humidity in. So quite simple. Put a big old plastic bag over it. Preferably one you've not used before. That'll keep the moisture in real well. You do need to check it uh, to find out how, how your leaves are doing. They may humidify real quickly and you can use your leaves in a day or two or maybe it takes a little more time depending on the overall humidity in your area. Um, I do not store my leaf in the humidi humidification trays because again you don't want them too moist for too long because they will get moldy. Okay so that's about it for today. If you have questions please feel free to drop me an email or ask a question in the comment area of the YouTube page. Thanks again and smoke them if you got them.